All right, welcome to the February 10th TSC call. Um, as you are probably all aware, uh, there are two things that you must abide by on this call. The first one is the antitrust policy notice that is displayed currently on the screen. And the second one is our code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. Uh, it basically says, don't be a jerk. Um, I do see that we have some guests on the call today. So welcome to everyone who has joined. Um, you're all welcome to participate in this call. Uh, so we will jump straight to our announcements. So the first announcement is one that we see every week here. Uh, the Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter goes out each Friday. And if you are interested in including anything in that newsletter that goes out to hundreds of developers, um, please leave a comment on the wiki page that is linked in the agenda. The second thing uh, we've seen for the last couple weeks uh, is the call for mentors and projects for the 2022 uh, mentorship program. So if you have a particular project proposal that you would like to have considered, please uh, add that before March 9th. And uh, the next one that we have, uh, Jim, thank you so much for creating the issue um, that we had talked about in our last meeting um, for capturing kind of the discussion that we've been having on the project health and the project reports. So if you haven't had a chance to review that issue yet, please go ahead and do that. Add any additional thoughts or comments that you might have. Uh, Jim would like to try and do this mostly offline um, so that we don't have to get together in meetings, but uh, obviously if that's not gonna work, we will have to uh, get a task force together to, to sync up on how we move forward with the project reports and reporting on project health. Uh, the next announcement here is uh, David sent us out an email on the TSC list letting us know that the project and lab services document that we had reviewed in past meetings is now currently live. And uh, if you are interested in using any of the services, please reach out to David or uh, the contact mail that's listed on the page. And then the last announcement that I added just this morning, um, I'm going to let Daniela talk through. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah. Um, I am uh, very pleased to announce that uh, Hart Montgomery, who many of you uh, have worked with for the last six, seven years, some of you seven years, um, has agreed to become our Hyperledger Foundation Chief Technology Officer. Uh, for those of you who've worked with Hart before, you know how instrumental and how helpful he's been in our community uh, and uh, especially in the Technical Steering Committee. So I'm very pleased to uh, have the opportunity to announce him yesterday. Um, he already spoke at an event last uh, yesterday at Dev Week, so we wanted to take advantage of that and tell the greater open source developer community that the Hyperledger Ledger Foundation has new uh, leadership from a technical perspective. So uh, Hart, I'll let you go ahead and say a few words and kind of uh, maybe share with the rest of the TSC. I know you've spoken to many of them uh, a little bit about um, what you would like to do and more importantly, what the next steps are. I know as of today, you're still a Fujitsu uh, employee and uh, participating as a Fujitsu um, uh, employee and contributor. So uh, over to you, Hart. And once again, a big welcome to Hart. Um, I am delighted beyond belief that um, Hart has joined our Linux Foundation staff um, and look forward to great things from him. Awesome. Well, thank you to Daniela first for the very kind words. Um, I've enjoyed you know, working with you and, and really, I think a lot of people on this call over the years, and I'm excited to have the opportunity to do that more in the future and to help move Hyperledger forward. Um, so, as such, uh, I will be officially resigning from the TSC after this week because I cannot be on staff and on the TSC at the same time. Um, I will also be turning over my leadership positions uh, in various projects and we have um, we have already planned those. So I'm optimistic that those will go smoothly um, and Yes, so I'll be officially starting next week uh, and I'm looking forward to contributing in a new role. And thank you everyone. All right, 
Thanks, Daniela. Thanks, Hart. Congratulations, Hart, on uh, becoming the first CTO for Hyperledger Foundation. Uh, we look forward to, to working with you and seeing how we can improve as we move forward. All right. Uh, any other announcements that anybody has uh, before we move on in the agenda? Yes, Daniela. I just want to reiterate the call for mentorship program and really ask everybody on the TSC and others that are here today to please reach out to um, others in your project communities and ask them to take a look at the mentorship program. It is a really a great opportunity to get uh, a new contributors and developers into our community, but b things that you want to get done within your projects or your labs. Um, so please, if you haven't yet, take the time. Please reach out to any of us on staff if you want to talk about what what does it mean uh what does it mean to be a mentor because it's really important for us to uh, get some great um contributors as part of that process thank right. you yep thanks daniela Bar bobby hi um i just have a question there seems to be when i was talking about um the mentorship program and the call for community projects a little overlap on both of those is there a differentiation between the two bobby are you talking about the hyperledger challenge yeah the challenge i mean it's kind of along the same lines as you know devoting yeah. your time to mentor um people so i was like wondering if there was something different about them that you know you can talk sure. to their so differences there, there there is something you know what's unfortunate is the timing because i think the timing of it of of, of one thing uh, right before the other is been the most complete confusing and i'll let david boswell speak to that but the hyperledger challenge is a community led uh, uh, the event. It is not a Hyperledger Foundation sponsored event. It is the community has gotten together. Um, and this was um, through uh, the leadership of the Hyperledger India regional chapter and the Hyperledger uh, Social Impact SIG. And I know some of the other leaders in our community have been working uh, for that challenge. So that challenge is a complete community developed um, uh, pro um, event um, and uh, initiative. And we think it's fantastic. It's really driven a lot of interest. Um, so thank you to those on the phone here that have, have um, done that. The Hyperledger Mentorship Program is something that happens every year. Um, it is funded. Um, so these uh, in, uh, mentees do get um, a, 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 a uh, uh, stipend, I guess, you know, an internship fee of up to $6,000. And Bobby, I know that you participated last year and you had some of the mentees uh, and you were a mentor. Um, and uh, so that it's a really different project. Um, it's, um, yeah. And David, I know that you've been addressing this with the community, the same question. So I'll let you add anything that you need to add. I mean, just to build on what you said, I mean, they are similar. Um, and there are some differences as well. I mean, I think broadly speaking, I'm really excited to see that there's more opportunities to mentor people. I mean, I think the annual mentorship program that Hyperledger runs is great, but I think a best practice in open source is to do mentorship. You know, that's how you share knowledge. That's how you bring new people in. You have the people who are in the community who have the expertise and then they hand it off to people. So I, I'm really excited to see additional mentoring opportunities happen. As Daniela said, the, the timing might've been a little bit different uh, um, but I'm really excited to see additional mentoring opportunities. And, you know, I would personally like to see even more mentoring opportunities throughout the year. So for everybody who's stepped up and done mentoring, you know, thank you. And, and you know, I think maybe there's a way that we can make these, you know, more complimentary with each other. But, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad that the people in the community who are organizing the challenge are stepping up and doing that. And thank you for providing another opportunity to help bring people into the community. And for anybody who is interested in mentoring, you know, I would really encourage you, encourage you to look at both opportunities and then maybe we as a TSC can talk about what additional mentoring opportunities we could, you know, pursue, you know, later in the year as well. No, that's great. Thank you for the clarification. So um, maybe uh, the community challenge projects could wind up in the mentorship program. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's probably a way that we can make these complementary and have one feed into the other if you, you know, say, hey, I'm interested in being a mentor for the challenge. Maybe we should email you and let you know about the other mentorship opportunities and vice versa. Great. 
Great, thank you. Yeah, Bobby, that's a great idea. It's just, um, you know, in, of uh, volunteers who want to be mentors to be able to understand that, right? One could feed into the other. All right, thanks. Um, are there any other announcements that anybody has that they'd like to make? All right, so seeing no hands, seeing nobody coming off mute. Um, so we did get three quarterly reports in uh, this week. We got the Aries and Indy uh, report uh, that came in, as well as the Aroha report. Um, I did not see any specific questions uh, that were not addressed in the comments on those particular reports, uh, but want to give the opportunity here for anybody who has any uh, questions or comments on those reports to offer those now. And I, I see that we have quite a few representatives from Aroha on the call. So uh, Sarah, or if you had anything that you wanted to say. Hi, uh, no, not exactly. We just came to, just in case, if there are any questions, if there are any clarifications needed also, uh, uh, I think on the call is the uh, new uh, project manager for Hyperledger Aroha to Dmitri. Uh, uh, probably you met him on a previous call, uh, but just in case, I think it's important to, uh, I don't know, may maybe it's important to say hi. So yeah, that's one of the biggest uh, changes, I think. But yeah, if there are no questions from your side or uh, something, we, we were here just in case if there are any questions to present the report and uh, yeah. Yeah, That's thank you. Thank, yeah, thank you, Sarah. Uh, we, we really appreciate you uh, joining these calls after you submit the reports in case there are any questions. So um, uh, today it doesn't look like we do have any questions for you. Um, feel free to, to stay on the call, though, and, and contribute to these other discussions as, as you see fit. Thank you. All right. With that, and, and Dimitri, welcome to the Aroha 2. Um, we're happy to have you as a, a contributor as well. Thank you, guys. OK, so let's move into our discussion topics. Um, the first one uh, is a topic that Arun brought to us. I think I will let Arun introduce this topic and um, you know, start the discussion. Thanks, Tracy. So hey, everyone, a quick introduction of what this issue is, and not exactly issue, it's rather a discussion point. So when we were having a discussion with Alfonso for one of the community events, and Alfonso suggested that a few folks from CNCF reached out to him and asking how can they get involved with Hyperledger? And they have the cloud expertise, they have knowledge on some of the things that may be beneficial and they did not have a starting point for them at on getting involved with Hyperledger itself. So I wanted to understand in more depth, and that's when Alfonso connected with me to um, Raul, who is all on this call as well. And he'll be speaking more about uh, the collaboration opportunities that he has a proposal for. So I'll hand it over to Raul from, he is based in California. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yes, Raul. Excellent. Um, well, thank you, uh, Arun, for the uh, introduction, the kind introduction. Um, my name is Raul Flamenco. I'm the co-organizer of Cloud Edis San Salvador. This is a community uh, in El Salvador, Central America. Uh, up to now, the community has grown to approximately, uh, uh, I would say, two, 280 uh, participants. This came as a result of an idea to, to do a First, uh, Kubernetes Community Day. This is a, an event that happens uh, in communities uh, in which we can uh, share uh, knowledge about the different projects at CNCF. As uh, you may know, the project of uh, CNCF got started through Kubernetes. But since then, those projects are, are more, uh, up to probably 80. And so for us, it was an opportunity to open doors for more talent from Latin America. One of the things that we noticed is that I'm glad that this morning the conversation also happened around mentorships. 
Um, that's one of the, the main things how I came in contact with uh, Alonso uh, Covella. He's going to be presenting tonight at the um, at the Cloud Native um, San Salvador. Uh, it's more like a meetup and share. Um, uh, the intent is to share uh, more information about Hyperledger and for CNCF to, to share more about our community as well. But the Main reason why I, I reach out to Alonso is because I noticed he was a mentor for the Hyperledger project. And so, and he happened to be in May. So um, unlike uh, another observation was that uh, these projects are very visible. So we can tell, for example, who the mentors are, who the mentees are, what the projects, what are the requirements, that's a good thing. But um, overall, uh, perhaps I haven't looked very deep, but I have looked quite extensively and I couldn't find uh, an individual that had completed this project from Latin America. And the reason why I think I thought that was important is because if we have one, we can invite him or her to, to talk to the community and make it uh, easier for the rest of the members to see the possibility of securing one of those uh, mentorships. Why? Because another thing that we notice is that if those individuals that complete a mentorship um, successfully, immediately can secure a job, a full-time job. And those jobs can are available anywhere in the world. So the, the idea is that instead of these um, young people, which is probably the biggest treasure that these countries have, uh, walk anywhere from San Salvador to the United States, uh, Los Angeles, just like I did, instead of doing that, they can do this job from, from El Salvador. So we are working, we're trying to understand as much as possible about the, about the project so we can open doors for for uh, these individuals. One of the things that we are encouraging them as well is to participate on QCOM. QCOM happens once uh, a year in North America and once a year in Europe. The next one, it is in Valencia in May. And so we encouraging those students to um, apply for um, uh, scholarships to travel to, to Valencia. Last year in October, we had one student from um, El Salvador who attended uh, QCOM in Los Angeles. And so he is one of the co-organizers uh, for, for the community as well. So any conversations with Alonso, we start possibly you know, thinking about doing a Kubernetes uh, community day uh, jointly. But again, that is a process, just a conversation right now that needs to be developed. Perhaps it would uh, improve tonight during our presentation. And so we're looking forward to that. Thank you. All right, Danielle. Um, Raul, thank you for coming and speaking with us. That's fantastic. Um, and it's so great to see Alfonso and you connect um, and really expand. And, and we do um, some other collaborations across other LF projects. I know the Linux Foundation Open Source Summit uh, virtual in Latin America is coming and we're going to be participating and are asking um, um, our Latin America community to present at that as well or to put in their CFPs for that as well. Um, so we'd love to work with you. Um, David, I don't know if you have touched base with Alfonso with this, but uh, David and I um, will reach out to you, Raul, if um, if that's okay, and, uh, and work with Alfonso and yourself to see how we can assist. Thank you, uh, Daniela. Okay, great. Uh, any other uh, questions or, or comments to, to Raul around, you know, ways in which we might um, make Hyperledger stronger across the globe? Um, Sure. So I, I guess Raul probably short sold himself now on this call, but when I had a call with him last week, he actually uh, proposed many other ideas as well. So one of the ideas were the expertise that CNCF community brings in and some of the projects that we have in Hyperledger around tooling, which could highly benefit, I mean, benefit from those expertise that the CNCF communities can bring in. But the question, however, he had was, how do we train them? How do we uh, bring them up to speed so that they can be contributors to these, these projects? And Raul also suggested, or maybe uh, told that they are highly enthusiastic in learning and getting involved with Hyperledger, especially blockchain ecosystem, and they trust Hyperledger to be uh, one such umbrella or ecosystem, which they should get involved. And 
we can look for ways of building community around projects such as Bevel, Celo, and uh, any other tooling projects that we have, right? Including Caliper. I guess that's a great opportunity if we can connect maintainers of those projects or probably plan around some activities around that. Yeah, completely agree, Arun. I, I think this is a a call, right? Um, that maybe it wasn't strong enough, but I think a call to all of the maintainers of the different projects that if you're interested in getting more contributors, this might be a way to to do that, right? Um, working with the the Latin America um, community, uh, working with Rahul and Afonso uh, to to make that happen, right? That there there's a desire for learning, there's a desire for mentorship, there's a desire to get um, people aware of the projects within Hyperledger. All right, um, Daniela, you still have your hand up. I don't know if that was just a holdover or, thank you. Um, any other comments or questions that we would like to, to ask Raul while he's on the call with us? All right, seeing none, uh, I will again thank Raul for his time, um, for coming to speak to us. I, uh, I hope that this starts to get the call out to a number of different folks to really start to engage more. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that there's a lot more conversation that's going to happen after this particular call. Thank you, Tracy. All right. So uh, with that, then let's transition to our next discussion topic. Um, so Grace has been leading a task force and uh, specifically on what is the right direction for our chat system. Uh, I'm going to hand this over to Grace, even though I didn't tell her I was going to do that, but hopefully she knew that this was coming. Um, hand it off to Grace to have a conversation around the proposal that uh, she has put forth to the TSC. Cool. Yes, I was expecting this. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> thanks, Tracy. No, um, yeah, no, th thanks for, um, I can share my screen if that's helpful. I'll drop the link in the chat. I did share this in the TSC email last week, so happy to, um, uh, you know, I hope folks have had a chance to review, but maybe I'll just give like a three to five minute spiel of kind of the process that we went through and uh, who we talked to and, and the proposal at hand, and then I'll, um, and then obviously open up to questions and, and all that. So let me share my screen just in case. Um, so I'm sure you guys, are, many of you remember um, a few months ago, uh, we were originally supposed to transition Hyperledger from Rocket Chat to Element or Matrix Chat Channel. Uh, that didn't pan out for various reasons. Um, so in that kind of decision, or we decided that it might make sense to kind of do a broader evaluation of the chat channel system, understand what Hyperledger's communities use the chat channel services for, who uses it, what uses it, what are the strengths, weaknesses, and all that. So um, there was a group of task force set up, as, as Tracy mentioned, uh, with uh, participants across several of the different projects, including many of you here. So thank you for your time. Um, <laughs> and we um, kind of got together and wanted to understand what are the challenges, what are we thinking of, uh, what what does Hyperledger need kind of for this next phase for communication? So um, you can see here on the, um, the task force page, um, if you all were interested, you can see kind of our notes on the left side from our meetings. You can see our interview questions and the different responses from all the different groups we talked to, if you're curious. Um, so after that process, we've run over the last couple months and gathering feedback. Uh, we uh, are recommending that Hyperledger transition to Discord. And we put together this proposal in, in front of you. Um, so uh, I think, you know, one thing that we realized, you know, we, we wanted to ask the question, is it really worth uh, moving at all? Um, and, you know, is Rocket Chat working just fine for everybody? And we're trying to solve a problem that isn't there. Uh, and I think, you know, the group would agree that we definitely saw a lot, uh, several, like, significant challenges that the community members have had with Rocket Chat uh, generally. Uh, particularly with onboarding user experience, so uh, using a you know LFID to join, um, having uh, many channels be outdated or not used, um, uh, it is a more costly platform. All those challenges were kind of identified, and we we decided that it made sense to 
to uh, pretend to recommend Discord. Um, why Discord, you might ask. Uh, so one, we got feedback from the group that and the community members that it's easy to use. Um, so the onboarding is much more seamless than, than Rocket Chat. Uh, two, there's some familiar some familiarity already across the community. Lots of people already use it, so that was promising as well. That you know it wouldn't be a, uh, a steep learning curve for the uh, the communities. Uh, and then third, you know, it is cheaper than Rocket Chat. Um, I did link you here. You know there is a feature comparison if if you're so inclined to look. Um, uh, as a part of the task force, we also you know, realize it's not just a recommendation, but how do we make this an easy process or how would we recommend the, the TSC, um, uh, I guess, approve, you know, the migration? Because, you know, it's not just um, saying, here's a new chat channel, go, but let's, you know, make sure we're being very conscientious and moving everyone in a, uh, you know, I guess, high communication manner. So here's our recommendations on the, the migration uh, and, you know, what communication should be sent and, and potential timelines. Uh, we also recommend, you know, some channel cleanup, which, um, and how we would kind of take the opportunity to recommend different channel organizations and, and naming, uh, uh, including, you know, how we would recommend each of them be consistent. So every time you're looking for a new channel or, or you're familiar with one project, but you might not know the other one, uh, or might not know, you know, where to find the other one, it'll be easy to find because, you know, you know I'm familiar with basic contributors. If I want to find the contributors fabric, I just look up fabric contributors, for example. So just kind of some general cleanup here around how we can better manage the chat system uh, around the chat channel expectations. You know, we did have a conversation as a group uh, around, you know, maybe we should have multiple cha chat channels or how should we, you know, best serve our community. And we think that it, it, it made the most sense to have um, one chat channel be the home and recommended um, a place for, for the community broadly. Um, so that's just kind of written out here. Um, we also you know, recommended that the TSC um, uh, helps kind of oversee the, the migration path. So we're able to understand you know, how it's gone, ask the questions uh, of the projects of how the migration has gone, just to make sure we're keeping a pulse of, you know, we're not losing community members through that process. And then at the bottom here are just kind of a um, FAQs of, of you know um, um, that we thought might be helpful as well. So I think that's I think that's all. I'll maybe I'll pause and say, does anyone from the task force want to speak up or add anything that I haven't mentioned here? Okay, uh, so yeah, so then if, if no other additions or I didn't miss anything important, uh, maybe we'll take questions or feedback. Peter. Sorry, it's, uh, it's not a question. I just didn't reach the unmute button in time. So I wanted to give this little extra information that was important to me about Discord that it does support uh, linking specific messages externally, as in via HTTP links that uh, you can post elsewhere, such as on GitHub. And this, for me, was very important, so I figured I would additionally highlight this as uh, other things. Thank you. All right, thanks, Peter. So any discussion uh, from the TFC members, any um, concerns with the proposal, any sort of things that we should think about. Um, you know, this is the, the expectation here, I think, is that, uh, you know, the TSC is going to end up voting on this proposal to see if it's something that we would like to uh, do or not. So I think this is our time to discuss before we get to the, the process of voting yay or nay. Uh, Jim? Yeah, no question for me. Just want to uh, thank uh, Grace and the task force for getting this and, and Rai for setting things up, uh, at least from the Fireflies community's point of view. We've been using it extensively for discussions um, and no complaint, very smooth experience. Okay, thanks, Jim. I'm finding it really hard to believe that there's no sort of discussion or commentary that people want to have. Uh, Arno? Yeah, 
Are you expecting to have some kind of trial period? I mean, honestly, I've never used Discord. I have no idea what this is going to be like. I know my son, who is a teenager, uses it. <laughs> but that's the extent of how much I know about it. <laughs> yeah, I know there has been a test server set up um, that a few of the folks on the task force have been uh, using. Uh, Jim just mentioned that they've been um, transitioning their stuff over on the Firefly side to have discussions to see how it's working. Um, so I don't know that in the plan we had any sort of trial period specifically um, focused on this. Grace, thoughts on that? Yeah, so we actually um, mentioned this in the task force meeting and, and we had the same question and, and we kind of decided that we because we've been ongoing the um, uh, kind of pilot phase over the last few months with different projects testing it out, you know, the space being worked on, you know, Cactus and Firefly have been uh, using it. We kind of designated that as, as appropriate enough, you know, pilot to make sure it worked for us. Um, but yeah, and I think Dano, maybe you were going to speak up, so. Yeah, the basic team did kind of a little quick pilot and, you know, we said, oh, we need to wait until there's a formal thing before we get back to it. And all the maintainers there are like, well, when can we go back? When can we go back? So there's a lot of support, at least in Besu. And part of that stems from the mainnet part of Besu, having, um, needing to interact with the ETH research discord. Uh, most of the Ethereum, mainnet Ethereum type uh, teams and projects have all moved to discord for the most part. And it's, it's a lot better user experience than Rocket Chat. Um, it's... You know, there's, uh, I've never had it accidentally log me out. I never had it miss messages on a phone. There was a PR that went out that because I didn't see it on my phone, I wasn't able to review it and it got forgotten about. So there's, you know, and there's a lot more active development going on in Discord than there is in the Rocket Chat servers and Rocket Chat clients. So I think we just get, it's it's the whole issue of, of um, the winners win more. And, you know, there's exponential, you know, the, the power of the network is greater. The more people you get, you know, the, the whole is greater than some of the parts by the network effect law. So I think that's a lot of the benefit we would reap by going to Discord is a lot of the, the, the stability and ease of use we just get secondarily because of the larger Discord community versus Rocket Chat, which is quickly becoming an also ran in the in the ephemeral chat race. It's, it's quickly consolidating is what I see going on. I mean, my concern, honestly, you know, it's not even for me personally. I actually believe I'm fairly flexible for this kind of stuff. I just I'm used to make do of whatever, but uh, we, we've been through this before where we said, oh, let's all switch to, you know, element. And then people say, oh, no, no, I don't like it. And so my concern is, you know, I, I would like to make sure we're not going to end up with, you know, well, there's one project who doesn't like it. And then we end up with yet another situation where some people are unhappy say, hey, this sucks. We should move to this other new stuff that's much better, <laughs> right? And, and so that's my only concern here is, you know, are we confident that just because there are, and, you know, I don't mean to disregard the, 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 the report from the, uh, the people who are on the task force. I'm very willing to take your word for it. But, you know, we are basically being asked to decide for the whole community. And I don't know that, you know, I can do that uh, with the, the confidence that, yeah, everybody is going to like it. That's all. The, That's the problem my concern. With, the problem with Element was that it wasn't going to be able to scale and the resources that were put on to scale it had gotten taken off. So it wasn't that one project or one team said, no, I don't like Element, is that Element couldn't handle um, the level that LF was going to put on it. So that's one thing Discord does have solved and solving the issue that we were having with our transition directly. Jim? Yeah, I just want to stress the, the fact that uh, we've had really good experience. Uh, we our, our team was very reluctant to use Rocket Chat because it was it was a very bad experience because we're used to using Slack, which as you guys know, is very smooth. Uh, but using Discord, we can say it, it offers uh, equal, uh, like comparable experience as the commercial product with, with, with Slack. Um, so I think uh, to, to Arnold's point, as far as user experience go, it's probably <clears throat> the, the best out there. 
Uh, and then it, it's obviously very easy for a new project like Firefly to pick up this uh, and go. Uh, so the concern with migration, I think teams like Fabric, which has a very significant following back in, in, in Rocket Chat, uh, probably should, should weigh in on, on the cost of migration, which you know, obviously uh, Firefly team wouldn't, wouldn't have a problem for. All right, thanks, Jim. Right. Sure, I just wanted to bring up uh, two things. Uh, one, Dan already touched on, uh, the reason Matrix didn't work out was because of a change of uh, priorities at, at LF. Um, and I, I, I know I say this all the time, but we already have multiple uh, chat platforms. We already have, uh, Aroha is on Telegram and all of our uh, Chinese uh, community is on WeChat. Uh, so we, we already have that, that issue before us. So, uh, you know, anyway, that's all I got. But, but so let me ask a follow-up question. Then if I may interject, I mean, is the expectation that those groups will be able to use discord and be happy to, I hope that I hope so. I hope it's good enough that we can pull some of that traffic over, but I think, you know, with WeChat, that's going to be a very long and difficult road. Yeah. Okay. But at least yeah. in Roha, it would be interesting to know if they, they would be willing to let go of Telegram. Anyway, thanks. And that sort of um, reach out is certainly something we'll need to do. I mean, I think as Grace was saying, it's not like we just say, yes, this is the proposal, we're done, and then that's the end of it. There's kind of a a process that will go on after we make a decision, I think, to make sure people are encouraged and helped to move over. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna break in here, guys, and say if you do have a comment to make, please raise your hand because we do have a queue already of people who are looking to make comments on this topic. Um, so, uh, you know, obviously we do have the Aroha team on the call. They can also raise their hand and make comments on this as well. Uh, but I am going to call Hart, who has had his hand up for quite some time. Awesome. Thank you, Tracy. So I just want to point out that anecdotally, uh, David, Peter, and I gave a talk at Developer Week yesterday, and we were explicitly asked if there was a Discord community for Cactus. So people who aren't familiar with Hyperledger but are sort of interested in the blockchain space you know, are familiar with Discord. They have Discord. And they're asking if we have Discord communities. Um, I think we all laughed on stage when we, or at least the virtual stage, when we got this question because it was uh, so relevant to what we'd been talking about. Um, so I think that just sort of uh, galvanized my opinion a little bit on this, that I think this is a great thing to do because uh, people outside of Hyperledger expect it. All right, thanks, Hart. Dave? Uh, Jim asked about projects like Fabric that have a long history on Rocket Chat. And I've, I can't talk to everybody, of course, in the Fabric world, but I have talked to a few people. And I think we'd be very happy to make the switch, actually, even with um, you know having to pull over legacy users from Rocket Chat. Uh, one of the other problems besides just the technology is, you know, the, the number of channels that we've had. We created way too many in the early days. Um, and I think the new structure that's proposed here is very good uh, in terms of having one general uh, channel, one for contributors and one for announcements. I think that's going to make things a lot easier. So at least uh, myself and the other maintainers I've talked to from Fabric would be very happy with this. All right. Thanks, Dave. Jim? Yeah, thanks, Tracy. I just want to clarify one thing because the, the question of Telegram came up. Um, my understanding is um, as far as what Hyperledger is paying for and making available to members, um, WeChat, uh, sorry, <laughs> Rocket Chat was the only thing, right? And we're switching to Discord. So if others are still wanting to do other platforms, I, I don't know if, if that's, a, that's a problem we should worry about as part of the, the, the consideration for the, for the migration. Yeah, I would just add on for, for Arno's sake, so he doesn't have to jump in here, but I think the, the concern, if I heard correctly from Arno, is more around um, 
this idea of are we going to fracture the community even more, right? So we already have a fractured community as far as chat is concerned. Are we going to fracture it even more if people are not willing to to move over to Discord um, as the platform? Peter? Thank you, Tracy. Just a quick point extra on what Arno said, which is how, we, how do we know if people will be willing to migrate from their existing other chat platforms? And I thought about the same thing, but then eventually arrived at the conclusion that we don't. But uh, I am very confident personally that we have a much better chance of convincing them to migrate over to Discord than we had with Rock Chat, just because of the because of all the all the reasons that everybody else has mentioned already. All right, thanks, Peter. Sarah. Hi. So yeah, we use um, we use bridges to bridge Rocket Chat uh, with Telegram and Gitter. So I think that at this point, Rocket Chat is the least uh, used chat. I think so, and I understand why. Personally, I every it took me like a couple of weeks to understand how to log in with LFID that you need to log in and then just close this um, second window and only then you will be redirected. So it was a little bit tricky. And uh, yeah, overall it's like, it's, it's a little bit difficult. And I agree that it might not be the best uh, idea. And uh, yeah, but the question is, um, I'm looking at different options for bridging Discord with other, uh, with other chats. Uh, have you researched uh, the options to bridge the chats together somehow maybe? As far as I know, Sarah, that is not the case. Um, I know we have two hands up already, but it, I don't know if any of the other task force members have done any research on bridges. I don't, seems, I just, sorry, go ahead. So yeah, it just seems like there are some bridges. So uh, like Discord is very popular, so it might be easier to find options for Discord as well. Like, but if we, will it be okay if not everyone is on this board? Grace, you were going to jump in with a comment. Sorry, Arno. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, we didn't do too much research. I'll drop in the chat. It looks like there is a bridging option uh, documentation between Discord and, and Telegram. This is just my Google search really fit quickly. But the goal and and the um, the goal is to have uh, all of the projects in the Hyperledger community operate on one chat channel. Uh, I'm sure we can, we'd love to talk to the Aroha team and kind of work through what that means for you all specifically, but I think the goal is definitely just, just one, uh, one, uh, one channel, but, um, and happy to kind of talk through, you know, discord with you all and then see if it meets your needs. Um, but there is like, just to be clear, it looks like doing a Google search, you can have a bridge, you know, but someone would have to validate that. Got it, thanks. All right, Arno. So I think Grace kind of answered indirectly my question, but I want to make it clear. I mean, the expectation is that Rocket Chat will be sunset. That is yes. the expectation, yes. Right. So is there like a time frame? We would. Uh, I'm sorry if you mentioned this. I I may have missed it, but uh... I believe we have it in the proposal. Sorry, I'm answering the questions. I hope that's okay, Tracy. Tell yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, don't raise my hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so um, so what we do is we have kind of a 30, 60, 90 day review process for the task force to go through um, in the migration. I believe we give. I th I'm just looking at the plan. We have a one month transition timeline is what we propose now of like, here's when the original communication goes out. We send, um, we include the communications of the migration in Discord, Rocket Chat, mailing list, you know, all the other kind of the website, all those sort of things. But the plan is for it to be a one month transition. I, I think we're open to feedback on that though, if, if people think it should be longer. It's usually good to have uh kind of an overlap just to tell people who go through the old system, right? Hey, don't come here anymore, go over there. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's what that month transition would be. So it would be starting to say, go to Discord, go to Discord. Here's the new tribe right. channel. We're all going here. Yeah, exactly. Yep. But so, okay. I, I'm happy with that. But I, I, you know, I wouldn't want to end up with what was just talked about earlier, where we would have added Discord and then we still get stuck with Rocket Chat because some project said no. <laughs> Uh, so, if, if I might, the there are other external forces um, that are the LF spends a lot of money and effort to keep Rocket Chat running. Um, Rocket Chat is the last service that's on the previous um, uh, Authn stack. Uh, so there's a lot of internal pressure to, and Rocket Chat does not support the new Authn stack that all the other every other property the LF runs does. Um, so there is pressure to move off of Rocket Chat for you know external reasons as well. And there's, there's more to that as well. Uh, there are a lot of bugs, a lot of longstanding bugs that have not been fixed in Rocket Chat and we don't have the developer bandwidth to, to go fix. So there's, we're highly incentivized to move off of Rocket we, the Linux Foundation, are highly incentivized to move off of Rocket Chat. Sounds good. And I haven't heard anybody say, no, I love Rocket Chat. I want to stay on it. <laughs> so maybe this is irrelevant and this, not, this is a non issue. But I just want to make sure this was part of the plan that we would indeed pull the plug on Rocket Chat. So thank you. Yeah, or no, it's probably worthwhile, worthwhile to mention that at least here in the plan, right? That that is the case. Um, I think that. You know, obviously, it was an assumption that all of the task force members had, but didn't necessarily include it as a, a statement specifically. But definitely, should can include it. Uh, Arun. So, I guess we we can divide that into two sets of user, right? Those who regularly come and visit these channels. So these are contributors and willing to be maintainers kind of people, and those who are just looking for help on these projects. And since we are going to redirect, I, I'm assuming that we are going to set chat.hyperledger.org and redirect that to Discord directly when we start migration. And those people who still have bookmarked the old links on going to Rocket Chart, we need a work for, I mean, we need a plan for them. I guess one month period should still be good for them. I mean, is that good understanding that I have, or is it different from, I know I was part of the task force, but this is something that I did not find a fine answer for in this proposal. Yeah, so Grace, I think uh, the proposal says that we will add messages to the different chat channels on Rocket Chat to let them know that the system is being migrated over to Discord um right there's an faq here that says that uh we can sort of redirect uh the chat.hyperledger.org to discord server um so i assume those are the two kind of things that we'll be doing in order to make sure that people find the chat system yeah so uh there are i i have uh so number one Rocket Chat goes read only and is still available uh, for searching for some period of time, a few months or whatever. Uh, but on the front page, when you when you get there, you'll get a pop up saying, "Hey, discussions have moved." And I'll have a link. I just put a link in the TSC channel to the invite, the self serve invite for Discord. Uh, and then later, once Rocket Chat is actually turned off completely, uh, we would just do like an nginx. You know, redirect over to the to that URL so people can join or something of that nature. Okay, thanks, Rob. Kamlesh. Uh, so, uh, so, so, are we also planning to take a backup of Rocket Chat because mostly community refer the Rocket Chat previous communication uh, chats to uh, any kind of solution or some problem uh, there. So if we move to the new Discord channel and the people who are looking to old messages for solving their problem. So maybe like suppose we can make it available for read only or maybe uh, 
after few time few months we can take complete backup and put somewhere so it's always available to the community something can be done like that way so i i did this when we transitioned to slack um i i put a slack archive up on github uh, my plan is to do something similar with rocket chat uh I just really question the value of it uh, because chat is way more ephemeral. It's not like a mailing list where uh, it's just way more ephemeral. I, I question the value of, of getting the archive out, but I do plan on on getting an archive ren rendered as HTML in some way so that it, okay. it continues to be available. I think some value because people uh, refer to their old old chat, how the particular problem solved. What was the different links and different concepts? All right, thanks, Pramash. Um, any other questions or comments as we're approaching the top of the hour? Any thoughts on whether or not this is something we want to vote on today or um, whether or not we uh, need to? A bit more time before we get to the vote. Overall, I think we've heard more positive, uh, you know, comments in support of this. So, I think we should thank the task force and uh, go ahead for the recommendation. All right. So uh, we can thank the task force for sure. Uh, I do believe that Arno has maybe just motioned that we uh, vote on the proposal. Do we That's have right. a second? Second. Second. <laughs> All right, so we have a second. Um, so let's go ahead and vote then. Brian, do you wanna run us through a vote? Yeah, that'll yeah. be fine. Sure thing. Uh, <laughs> David Inyart. Yes. Grace. Yes. Hart. Yes. Jim. Yes. Kim Lesh. Yes. Nathan. Yes. Peter. Yes. Tracy. Yes. Troy. Okay, yes. Angelo. Yes. Arno. Yes. Artem. Yes. Arun. Yes. Bobby. Yes. Dano. Yes. <laughs> that, was, that was fairly enthusiastic. OK, the motion passes. All right. Thanks, everyone, for that. Uh, Rai, I think you really confused people by starting in the middle of the, uh, instead of at the beginning is the end. Um, but that's yeah. just to keep us all awake. <laughs> I've, I've considered uh, randomly picking them, but I, I didn't know if I could keep it in my head who I'd actually chosen. So. All right. Um, so thank you, everyone, for the discussion. Thank you to the task force for the amount of time that you put into this. I'm looking forward to the progress of us moving towards Discord and for me being able to remove a messaging system from all of my devices. Um, so thank you for that. Any other last comments or uh, anything else that people would like to bring up before we close the call? Quick reminder for tomorrow's task force. We have security process task force and I would encourage all of you to join in. And we have a couple of interesting topics to be discussed. So please do join in. All right, thanks Arun for that reminder of the security task force. Any other closing items? <laughs> All right, so with that, I am going to say thank you, Hart, for your service on the TSC. We are looking forward to working with you very closely in your new role as the CTO. And that is my closing comments for this go around. Um, thanks all for joining, and we will talk to you again next week. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Tracy. Bye.